Hey Blackheads. So we're going to talk about what splices you would use where. This is a fully covered eye splice and like we said this is for where places where you don't need the extra weight savings and friction savings but you do want a little extra protection. So this would make a lot of sense for things like halyards and uh, you might splice your main sheet onto your main sheet block. The tapered splice we use to save weight and save friction. So what, where would you want that? The number one place for a tapered line is going to be for spinnaker sheets because the sheet between the clue of the sail and the boat, any weight on there, especially in light air, is going to weigh you down. So taking the cover off saves that little bit of weight. It also makes the, uh, the line less likely to take on water because these cores don't absorb water at the same rate that the polyester covers do. So you can save weight and also save water weight. It also makes lines freer running so you can save some friction by taking off the cover and that's really helpful for things like spinnaker halyards that have to get hoisted in a hurry and sometimes go through or over fair leads. So the key to getting a full strength secure splice is to use the right length splice tail. For high tech ropes like this Dyneema core we figured out that we want 72 diameters. Now what do I mean by that? The diameter of the rope is from edge to edge like that not measured around but from edge to edge like that. You can measure that on a tape measure or with a micrometer. What you do is once you know that diameter just multiply it by 72. For example if you had a 10 millimeter core you would want a 720 millimeter berry. Now if we were just to bury the splice tail into the rope we would have a fairly strong splice but it wouldn't be full strength. The reason is is because when you bury this inside itself you have a very hard lump right there. The key to getting a nice full strength splice is to taper this tail. And the way we do that is by taking out certain strands. This rope has 12 strands and I'm going to remove about half of them by the end so that the rope transitions from being full diameter to a reduced diameter at the end. That's going to do a few things. It's going to make our splice stronger by not having an abrupt end to the splice. It's also going to make the splice cleaner running by not having that lump right inside the rope at the end of the splice. And it also makes it look better, which is key. Now you can see I've removed strands and I've, I've removed six strands total but I've done it in kind of a staggered pattern. The reason we do this is to have a nice gradual transition. A tapered joint like this is going to be significantly stronger than just having that abrupt end and we want to make it as gradual and clean as possible. So that's why we do alternating right left strands and we distribute along the length of the splice tail so it's a nice clean transition. Now I'm going to trim those off. You do want to trim these as close as you can to the rope so that they don't stick out of the finished splice. As the rope ages and gets, gets worked, that can happen. The other benefit to doing a tapered tail like this is it's significantly easier to push or to pull the splice tail back into the rope. So I'm going to do that again. You can see here's my 72 diameter berry. I'm going to bury it inside the rope with this puller, so I'm going to put the puller in a little bit longer than 72 diameters just to give me plenty of, plenty of room. And you can see with the tapered tail it pulls in much much easier than it did when we were just burying the end of the rope without a cut in taper. Now right before I pull the tail in I like to we need our puller again. We're going to take a little bit more rope in and then we're going to cut our taper to be extra fine. You can see the rope has unraveled now that's okay once it's inside the splice it doesn't matter. I'm going to pick out a few more strands and trim those off. And when I get to the very end, I've got just a few strands left. We're going to cut it on an angle. It makes that kind of just perfect tapered point. Then, and this is the fun part, you hold the splice near the throat of the eye and just milk the rope away and your tapered tail disappears. So, just like the Chinese finger trap example, when this is loaded, the braid and the friction trapped the, the splice tail inside itself, holding it tight. The tighter I pull, the, the tighter the splice would be. However, when we're unloaded, just like the Chinese finger trap, and there's no trapping action going on, no friction, it's easy for me to pull this out. So to secure it for that unloaded state, we'll be putting whipping over the top of this. You don't need much, you just need a few passes to hold this in place, and again, this only works at low load. At full at full load or anything more than a few pounds, the friction of the splice holds it together. But 
if I were to play with it at low load like that, I would be able to, to remove it, so we don't want that. So I'm just going to put in another whipping right here at the throat of the splice with a few extra stitches, and that will make this a full strength splice. Thanks for watching, Blockheads.